Namaste, and welcome to the latest episode of Uladu Narpadu. This is the fourth episode on real knowledge. And the first three were the setup, and now this one's going to be the punchline. <laughs> and I'm going to drop the bomb. <laughs> Ready? Here's the verse. Self, I am, which is clear and abundant knowledge, jnana, alone is real. Knowledge which is many, which knows the many objects of this world, is ignorance, agnana. Even that ignorance, the knowledge of the many objects of the world, which is unreal, does not exist apart from self, which is the only real knowledge. All the many ornaments are unreal. Say, do they exist apart from the gold, which alone is real? This is the gotcha. <laughs> he has been setting up <laughs> in the last three verses this trap. And this verse is to trap all the unrealized people who uh, propagate book learning in the name of his teaching. You know who you are. That knowledge is false. And the proof is they don't become realized. Only the people who are down to earth and simple and non-neurotic become realized. And they are usually denied recognition or fame because they don't have the symptoms of book learning demanded by the marketplace which has been created by the false jnanis. There's a difference between vidya, which is ordinary knowledge of the world, and jnana. First of all, jnana cannot be expressed in words. It's only an experience. Yeah, we can talk about it. We can create pointers to it. But we cannot really express jnana in direct terms. It's only a knowingness. However, intellectual knowledge, vidya, can be written because it's only symbolic. It's only name and form. Therefore, his ignorance. So here's what happens. A realized being like Ramana comes along and he spends 50 years giving a wonderful teaching which is an experience. And then a bunch of his direct followers write books about it. And instead of teaching the experience, start teaching from the books. And the actual teaching gets lost behind a curtain of literature. And this literature is all wrong. It's all ignorance. I mean, the experience of awakening or enlightenment is completely different from reading about it. There's just no comparison. But what happens is the Brahmanas come in, the false caste priests, and they make a dry religion out of a living teaching. Then they become booksellers. Uh, they make their living by selling books about the real teaching, which they keep hidden, or actually they don't even have. They lost it. They believe in their own bullshit. They believe in their own lies. And so they fall into the trap of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. They 
don't practice the real teaching, or if they do, they don't practice successfully. They don't attain realization, and they can't pass it on to their disciples. And if there is anyone who does, they band together and fight against him. So, this is what's going on. They don't want you to become realized because then you'll stop buying their books. <laughs> you'll stop coming to their temples. You'll stop participating in their dry rituals. Huh? You will have found something better, something more satisfying, something real, authentic. So, this is how it works. Let's just take one example. Oh, first I want to read this quote by Ramana. A visitor asks, Can one realize the truth by learning the scriptures and study of books? Marishi, no. So long as predispositions remain latent in the mind, realization cannot be achieved. Shastra learning is itself a vasana. Realization is only in samadhi. Samadhi is beyond the mind. Samadhi is ecstasy. So why can't a book-learned person attain this ecstasy? Oh, here's a good story. I love this story. <laughs> when a person inhibits himself sexually and does not explore his complete sexuality all the way to the bottom, all the way to the end, huh? he becomes angry. The frustration of not being able to satisfy the most primal desire in life, especially during adolescence, becomes a deep anger, which is then acted out and dramatized in different ways, all of which have the effect of inhibiting others as well. Shaming, morality, judgmentalism, entitlement. Huh? Oh, we are from the... We are from the holy caste, and nobody else is pure, right? Especially those terrible people who enjoy sex. <laughs> so all the religious scriptures, those written by the Brahmins, by the religious people, condemn sex. Now you'll notice something. If you realize, or sorry, if you read the Jnana Shastra, books written by realized people, they don't mention sex at all. It's like it's not even a, an issue. What to speak of a big deal. I mean, Janaka, for example, the great king who attained uh, the perfect realization, realized it while in his harem. So, by the way, did Buddha's father and many others. <laughs> you just don't hear of them. Because there is a conspiracy to suppress that information. Somehow or other, a few slipped by the curtain, huh? the saffron curtain. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Anyway, so an inhibited person who has not experienced his full sexuality, or her full sexuality. It's going to be neurotic. It's going to have a deep anger. And because of that, will inhibit their energy. In other words, there's a certain amount of energy in the human body, in the human being. And that energy is based on sex energy. So if the sex energy is inhibited, there's less than the full amount of energy available. So in the second chakra, which is the energy chakra, there is not a sufficient amount of energy to reach the full human potential and express it in other ways. So the energy becomes stunted, weak, less than complete. And because of that, one never experiences the full ecstasy of movement. Huh? And because one never experiences the full ecstasy of movement, then the heart 
cannot develop the complete expression of love, ecstasy of love. Because uh, love, ecstasy is best expressed by dancing. And because the full ecstasy of love is not developed, then the speech, the, the fifth chakra, becomes blocked. One cannot say what one really feels. One cannot express what it really means. One speaks only indirectly, uh, makes it impossible to resolve any issues. One becomes passive-aggressive, neurotic, and involved in an endless series of complex misunderstandings that are irresolvable because nobody is speaking what they really think. That's why I have to do it, so you don't have to. But then, because the speech is inhibited, because the full expression of the love that should be in the heart is held back, then also the thinking is wrong. As he says here, the knowledge which is based on the many objects in the world is false. Why? Because they are unreal. In fact, the whole world is unreal. It always comes into existence every morning, <laughs> right on time. As soon as you wake up, huh? there's the whole world. Boom. So because it's newly arisen, it can't be real. That which is born also must die. That which has a beginning also has an end. And when you go to sleep at night, that world disappears. Then you find yourself in another world, the dream world. So similarly, when the dream world disappears and you go into deep sleep, there's no world at all. There's no other at all. No objects at all. But because you're ignorant, because you're not self-realized, you can't see this. You block it from yourself. You don't realize it. And so you can't think rightly. Because you can't think rightly, you can't understand the scriptures, the jnana shastras, rightly. So many people tell me and comment on my videos that, gosh, you make it sound so easy and simple. Well, it is easy and simple, but you're too complicated because you've been reading those other books and listening to those other people who aren't realized and really don't know their ass from a hole in the ground, quite frankly. So because of that, you miss what is right in front of your nose or right in back of your nose. <laughs> your real self. I feel sorry for people like that. I really, feel, I really feel sorry for them. But what can I do? They choose to follow the wrong path. They choose to become neurotic. Or, even when hearing from someone who is not neurotic, they refuse to do the work to get out of it. And so everything else is broken. Everything else is inhibited. And then they wonder, why can't I become realized? Oh, it's so hard. No, it's not hard. But you have created an artificial situation by suppressing your own energy. Now, nobody can help you with that. You have to undo what you have done. You have to destroy what you have made. You have to come back to your original state. Once I had a Buddhist meditation teacher who told me, whatever you have done, that you must undo. Very good advice. So look at what you have done. You've been following the wrong path all these days. Put yourself in an artificial condition. As Ramana says, a nice Ramana quote on this. I'll have to dig it up for the next time. That... You have put yourself in an artificial position and then you make artificial efforts to overcome it. And of course you don't attain realization because the, the opposition and the efforts 
are completely nullifying each other. Useless. Completely useless. The only thing you can do is drop it. That's why Ramana says in another quote, your effort is your disease. It's easy. It's simple. It's natural. It's whole. It's complete. It's the self. Om Tat Sat Om Harihi Om